Tour de France stage one was a very contentious stage, a lot of crashes and we're going to get involved in them and obviously Alan Philippe was absolutely outrageous and won with a massive attack from very far out on the final climb. So we're going to go through the first crash first because I think it's pretty important to show how stupid some spectators are because you don't want to be like this person. So anyway, we're going to roll the clip now. La Tony Martin's going along, rides into a cardboard sign and basically crashes and takes out like 90% of the pants on. Really not a very good move by the lad with the sign. 10 out of 10, would not recommend bringing a large signpost that covers up half the road. Um, then we look at the next crash, B&B Hotels basically just stacked himself and again took out half the field, which again was really, really not ideal. Um, and then, so that basically means, you know, we've had two big crashes here. The first one obviously was pretty horrendous in terms of the fact that it was obviously a fan's fault, um, but luckily it wasn't too far speed. Only one lad, Yasha Sutherland, he had to go home. He is obviously on my fantasy team because I have the worst fantasy team luck in modern history. But that's neither here nor there. Um, but yeah, still pretty bad luck for everyone involved. Um, pretty pathetic by the person, by the fan with the little cardboard box. Tony Mann, I thought to be honest that he was such a tank, he would have just ridden straight through it, but apparently not. Uh, and then the other crash, I guess, is just an unfortunate for b and hotel lad, just sort of. I don't know, must have clipped a wheel or something and then took it down. Um, but this had quite a big effect on the final outcome of the race, actually, because what happens is on the last, you know, the lot, so the last 3K was the climb. First bit was really hard, like 10% or so, pretty steep, pretty tough day out, for, to be honest. Uh, but anyway, so going into that final climb, it was a definitely reduced sprint. Okay, all the GC favorites were pretty much there, more or less. We'll get to that later. There were a couple who were missing, um, and most of the main favorites of the stage, like Van Apple and Al Philippe, were all there. Um, so if we actually go to the climb uh, now, so like 2.3k to go, Alaphilippe's on the, um, Alaphilippe's got his teammate Dave Nines on the front, absolutely drilling it, and Alaphilippe just looks around at Wild Van Aert and is just like, you know what boys, it's time to go, and he absolutely launched it, I mean, it was a classic Alaphilippe, just really far out on a pretty punchy course, you know, like something, an effort that he can do where it's just like three, four minutes of just pure punch. And the boy, well, maybe it was a bit long, maybe it was more like a five minute effort, but you know, from where he went, it was only a three or four minute effort. And the lad was absolutely flying. He did look like it was a bit cooked halfway up, but it got a lot steeper, or a lot less steep, sorry, towards the end. Um, it was definitely steeper at the bottom, and Alaphilippe managed to solo to the win, which was absolutely huge. Um, now, if we have a look at so, some of the time uh, differences, so the first page, you know, everyone's pretty similar. No one too crazy. Carapaz lost like five seconds. Um, but then if we scroll down some more, you'll see like Ben O'Connor. Um, Miguel Angel Lopez, Emmanuel Bookman, uh, they all lost like a minute 50, and then like Richie Port lost 2 minutes 16, which is pretty bad. Tao Gegenhart hasn't even come on the results screen yet, so I'm not sure where he finished, but there were some pretty big losses in terms of general classifications early on in the tour um, stage 1, which is crazy. Now, maybe it was a better stage 1 than normal, because normally it's a TT. Okay, that hasn't been the case since 2015, I think. The first day it's been a TT. Um, but normally it's sort of a boring sprint stage, nothing happens. But actually, I really enjoyed this. And I was super happy that they actually had an interesting finish towards the end. One where you couldn't, okay, Alaphilippe was a big favorite, but you couldn't predict 100% from day one what was gonna happen. Uh, you did know it was gonna be hard towards the end. I also liked the way to break. There was actually a point being in it because it was hilly. There was uh, mountain classification points on offer. Um, but also you never knew maybe they could stay away maybe if they really were like a strong group and super motivated and obviously because of the crashes in the back Ida Schelling maybe if he wasn't on his own with some other people maybe they could have got further into the finale because I think he got caught with 10k to go um, and you know maybe if he had more teammates he could have gone a lot further into it but overall I thought it was a really good stage one super happy um, to see Alaphilippe win I'm a big fan of the boy um, but it was just a shame to see all the crashes just remember if you've got cardboard signed by the side of the road and you're watching a bike race Generally, don't whip it out in front of riders. 10 out of 10, would not recommend. Um, but yeah, cheers for watching. Hope you have enjoyed this little recap. Um, I should have some more content on the tour um, coming pretty much every day because uh, there's not much else to do these days apart from make banging content for you lads about for the tour. So anyway, we'll see you in the next one.